All right, lesson 2.3, adding and subtracting radical expressions. Uh, I think you'll find that this is one of the uh, easier lessons that we'll do in this unit, and I think you'll actually like it. I know this might sound kind of crazy, but it's one of my favorite things to do in mathematics is to add, subtract, radical expressions. There's nothing like a good time uh, just sitting at home on the weekend and some of these guys. So hopefully you enjoy the, them as much as I do. Uh, all right, so the same strategies that are used to simplify polynomials can be used for radicals. Like terms or like radicals must have the same radicand and the same index. All right, so the analogy that I can make is um, I could go and I could take, let's say, x um, plus 2y plus 3x. And now these are considered like terms because they have the same um, variable to the same exponent, all right? Whereas I could not add those together. So if I simplified this, I could write it as 4x plus 2y. Well, I can do the same thing with um, radicals here. Let's say I add uh, 2 root 3 plus 3 root 2 plus 5 root 3. Since these have the same radical to the same index, what I mean by index is that technically there's an imaginary 2 right in there, you can add those two together. So I can add those two and let's say that I have 7 root 3 plus 3 root 2. Common mistake that students will do is they'll start trying to add, let's say, those two terms together and tell me that it's 8 root 5 when if you check with your calculator it's nowhere close. All right? So that's what this lesson's all about. Um, examples should be quick, should be a quick one actually. So let's uh, g give it a go. So we have 9 root 5 minus 5 root 5. So notice that the square root of 5 cannot be simplified. So this is in um, uh, most simplified form. So since those are the same and they're simplified um, completely, then what I would do now is I would look at the coefficients. I just have a 9 minus 5. That would give you 4 root 5. Very, very simple. All right, not many of them will be that easy, um, but that's where we start. B. We have the cube root of 24 minus the cube root of 192 minus the cube root of 375. Now, right away, you cannot start adding and subtracting these things because they have not been simplified. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to simplify all these. I'm going to look for perfect cubes that live inside of these. So for instance, the cube root of 24, that has an 8 times 3 in it. And I know that the cube root of 8 is 2. And we have the cube root of 192. Uh, a perfect cube that goes into that would be, let's say, biggest one that I could pick would be 64, 64 times 3. Notice how a 3 is popping out into all of these? That's going to be important here, as you'll probably see. And last one, I'm going to anticipate that a 3 will probably be 3 times something, and lo and behold, it's 125 times 3. And you'll get a sense as to how these work in a second here. So now we take the cube root of 8, which is 2. So now we have 2 cube root of 3 minus the cube root of 64 is 4 and then the cube root of 125 is 5. Okay. I'm just going to highlight this. When the index and the radicand are all the same then you can combine these terms so it is appropriate for us to combine all these terms. Sometimes it won't be. Sometimes you might be done right there but not in this case. So we have 2 minus 4 minus 5. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7 cube root of 3. Okay, last one on this page. Um, this is definitely one that I'd like you guys to try on your own. Uh, try simplifying these and then uh, maybe fast forward and see if your answer is uh, the same as mine. So the square root of 9 times 7, 9 is a perfect square that goes into it. The biggest perfect square that goes into this one, or really the only one, would be 4 times 10. And what goes into 90? 9, 9 times 10 will work goes into 28, I know a 4 times 7. I always like to put the perfect square out front because then it, when I get it to come outside of the radical, I just find that the easiest. We get 3 root 7, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root is 3 again, and 2, like so. Now, remember you have to gather your like terms. I'm going to highlight in two different colors. The 7s will be yellow, and the 10s will be blue here. So, let's get the 7s together first. When we gather our terms with the 7, we have 3 minus the 2, it just gives you 1. We don't write 1 root 7, we just write root 7. And lastly, we have the 2 minus the 3, we give you a negative. So rather than negative 1 root 10, we just write negative root 10. 
doesn't matter what order. You could have done it also like this. You could say it's equal to negative root 10 uh, plus root 7. It makes no difference to me. These are equally right. All right, example two. Identify the values of the variables for which each radical is defined. Then simplify. So this um, builds on our knowledge that we uh, that we or the things that we learned last unit. Um, we have to define what uh, what we can have for a. Well, what do we know? When we take the square root of something, it must be positive. So if you're probably getting used to this. Um, basically, what we know about this radical right here is that it must be positive. So we are going to say that a must be greater than or equal to 0. So that's like your restriction. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, simplify, because that's what they also asked us to do. We have the same radical to the same index. 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 minus 11 is 0 root a. So I'd have technically 0 root a, but 0 times anything is just 0. So your answer actually is 0, Okay, with a being greater than or equal to 0 as your restriction. All right, so let's talk about um, our restrictions for this one first. Well, what do we know about these? Um, this one's maybe a little bit more difficult. We notice that we have radicals um, with an index of 2 outside here, so that's a 2 and a 2. So we know that whatever is inside there must be um, positive. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, so taking a look at this one, let's start out with our restriction first. Um, since we know that we have an index of 2 and an index of 2 here, whatever is in the radical must end up being positive or else that uh, just won't work here. Um, let's look at the a squared here. a squared, well we know no matter what number you put in for a, the outcome of it is going to have to be greater than or equal to 0. If you put a negative or a positive, it doesn't matter. So basically, it does not matter what a is. So we would say the restriction for this one is, a can be really any value that we want. Okay. Now let's look at b. Well, b, since we know that the outcome of a squared is going to end up being positive, then we know that b must also be greater than or equal to zero. All right. So um, that would be your second restriction. So these as being your two restrictions thus far. Okay. Um, the reason, of course, b had to be greater than or equal to zero. Imagine if it was negative, then the outcome of what was in here would end up being negative since our coefficients are positive. Let's go ahead and simplify now. Uh, for the first radical here, the 50, coefficient of 50, we would have a perfect square, 25 and a 2. Okay, I'll leave the a squared and the b like so. And in the 8, I'm going to write this one as 4 times 2. And the a squared and the b. All right. Now, if you recall, what we learned uh, a couple lessons before is that when you have this situation, the square root of a squared, that is just equal to the absolute value of a. So we're going to use that principle. Anyways, the square root of 25 gives you a 5. And then the a squared, when you take the square root of it, that's going to give me the absolute value of a. And what are we left with? We're left with root 2b. Now over here, the square root of 4 is 2. Again, we have the absolute value of a. And then we have the square root of 2b. Since these have the same radical, we can combine them, giving you 3 absolute value of a times 2b as your solution. All right, C. Uh, let's take a look at this one. What do we see here? We say the index is 3 to start out with. So that means that inside the radical, we can have positive or negative answers. And so whenever we see that that is odd, then P and Q can be whatever they want. All right. So this one's a little bit easier. We would say that P can be any real number, and Q can be any real number. This might be something you need for me to address in class. I'd be happy to do that. I'll explain to you how you can figure out almost by just kind of glancing at these what your restrictions are going to be. So we can simplify right away. Uh, let's deal with the 27 here first. Cube root of 27, well, the cube root of 27 uh, is going to work quite nicely. All right. Cube root of 27, of course, is 3, so I'm just going to back it up and I just write, simplify that right away. So I have 3. Now the cube root of p cubed, that's just going to give you a p. So what are you left with? You just have the cube root of q. Uh, now we have the same scenario over here. We have the 8's already pulled outside, so you don't need to do anything with that. And the p is just going to give you a p. All right. And then we have the cube root of q. Since, again, those are the same, you can combine those to give you 11p times the q root of q as your solution. Okay, last page. 
like I told you, a fairly simple lesson. Um, hopefully you're finding it okay. Uh, these ones are probably the quickest. So this one just says simplify. Since they've already told you what M and N are for these type of questions, you don't need to supply your own restrictions. They'll always say that in the question if that's necessary. So let's gather our like terms. Uh, with the M's, we have a 7 and a negative 3 that gives you 4 root M. These are definitely ones I'd like you to try on your own if you're not already doing that. That easy, my friends. Okay, give this one a try too on your own, please. Um, I will deal with the cube roots first. So since I'm seeing that all the radicals are the same, I know I can combine these ones. So I'll just highlight these just so I can kind of get them out of the way. So let's combine those together. That's going to give me a negative 7 cube root of negative 3b. Don't forget those cube roots. And now the last two terms, I can combine those, and that will give me plus 11 negative 3b. Good to go. Last one. All right. A little bit more work to do here. All right, we have some simplifying that we can do. So uh, let's go ahead and simplify first, and then after we're done that, then we'll go and try and combine our terms. 3. Since we're dealing with the square root, a perfect square that goes into that would be 16 times 2. Since we're dealing with in square root land, I'm going to go and put this into a even power, so a to the 4, minus 2, 9 times 5. 9 being the perfect square, I'll make this also even, so b squared times a b, plus 5b, perfect square that goes into 125, would be 25 times 5. And then lastly, minus 2a, perfect square that goes into this would be 36, times 2. And then again, I'll write this as a squared, an even power, and an a outside. We'll simplify. The square root of 16 is 4, so that's going to give me a 12. The square root of a to the power of 4 gives you a squared. What are we left with there? Well, we just have a, uh, what's that, 2a, okay. minus. Now, the square root of 9 is 3, so this will be 6. The square root of b squared is just a b, to 5b, plus 5b. And so if we take the square root of the 25, we get a 5. This gives you 25b times 5b root 5b, I should say. Square root of 20, sorry, square root of 36 is 6. Square root of a squared is an a. So this is going to end up giving you a 12a squared. It's 2a. Notice that the two terms that I'm highlighting right now are exactly the same, only one positive and negative. We can go and cancel those out. That's actually the exact sound it makes in real life. Uh, negative 6b plus 25b. They do have the same radical to the same index, so we can combine those. And lastly, your final answer here is 19b, square root of 5b.